Hey, everybody, Jim Cummings here. Thanks for stopping by. Don't go anywhere. Why? I'll tell you why. Because coming up next, we've got Tuned In with Jim Cummings starring Billy West. Billy West, come on. What? Uh, you know you're not going anywhere now. Oh, by the way, don't forget to check out our bonus content on Patreon. Be there. But it was funny because it was something to do with Ghostbusters and Extreme Ghostbusters. Oh, we were all the exes, like yeah. Pat Music. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and Mo and, um, and... And it was funny because I was singing the whole time and nobody knew it was me, apparently, in the podcast and because they're all my friends. And I was thinking... Somebody acknowledged that I'm singing the goddamn theme song with the something strange in the neighborhood. Who wow. you going to call? <clears throat> Ghostbusters. It was the extreme Ghostbusters theme song. It was the same song, but different, really different. Yeah. Well, it, and that was interesting. <laughs> that, it was interesting for me because I tried to disavow uh, that. I was new. I was green. Mm -hmm. New in town. And well, I you get, weren't green. I, I get booked on this show. <laughs> Uh, extreme ghostbusters and they said yeah we want you to do uh slimer and i said well, well wait a minute that's mr frank welker's gig yeah and they said but he doesn't want to do it mm. so stupidly i just said you know i mean oh, everybody yeah. was like yeah welcome on we got you on board oh, yeah. and ba 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 yeah and, and i translation i hadn't even met frank <clears throat> yet. right and boy i i threw a seven that week I was like, I can't get out of this. And I felt horrible. I felt like a heel, like a like a schmo. No. <gasps> well, nobody thinks that of you. But yeah, they, you know, uh, and I think what Billy's alluding to is the one who said, well, he doesn't really want to do it. They uh, they don't finish the sentence. Right. For scale. Right. That's what he didn't want to do, for scale. Okay, yeah. I yeah, mean, so you, you got a second or third season, thanks to who? You know, me, a little bit. Could I have some too? No, none for no, you. No. And uh, but they don't tell that to the people that they're they auditioning. Never have to the money you. to pay the fiddler. They'd rather spend it on ice sculptures. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. they never got money to pay the fiddler. Oh my God. The entertainment. Oh. Sadly, that's deadly accurate. We were doing something years ago, and Wayne, uh, uh, Wayne Allwine, Rusey Taylor, Mickey Mouse, and oh, Minnie Mouse. God. Bless and myself, him. we were down in uh, in Florida at uh, the opening of, I think it was actually for the opening of Disney World. I mean, this is like, no, it couldn't have been that that long ago. Anyway, it's some big to do. And uh, so they, oh, they had to have Pooh and Tigger and and uh, Mickey and Minnie. And so, and, and I think Goofy was there. And we're walking by these incredible, it, it, for, the, for the press, these astonishing ice sculptures, big giant Mickey. You know, and there's Goofy taking a pee on a tree, big ice tree. And, you know, and, and there's, there's, you know, Donald's over there doing arm farts uh, in ice. It was amazing, you know. And, and we are being schlepped on. And we go, wow, oh, boy, they went all out on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they go, right this way, right this way. And they go, oh, okay, well, this looks pretty good here. I mean, I like crab, you know, and lobster. And, and we go downstairs. <laughs> And we go inside this little Disney tower, mm -hmm. uh, a parapet, you know, like a, one of those little round things on the end of a castle. And we walk down the steps. We're walking. And we finally hit the ground floor, which is like way down there. And it's dark. And they flick on a light. And there's a card table over there with a can of Cheese Whiz Ritz crackers. You're kidding me. And a couple of Avions. <laughs> and then, and, and, we're, <laughs> and we're going, Wow. You know, and and it was just a ma and maybe some chocolate chip cookies, but you had to open up the Ritz. It was still in a box, the you know, and you had to. You did, I'm pop shocked off the, you didn't go off when you saw and that. I, and and we and I bring I just me said, the one who set this card yeah, table up. Yes, it, it was uh, it was early on, but yes, I had words. Um, and uh, we walked over, and Rusi said, "Oh my God, look! At least there's a bar here." So she goes over and says. Give me a martini, you know. Rusey Taylor was amazing. She was she was a broad. She was great. Yeah, yeah. You know, and she and 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 he goes, yes, ma'am. That'll be four fifty. She said, what? <laughs> I said, do you know who she is? I'm sorry. And I oh, said, do no. you know who she is? This is Minnie Mouse. Minnie Mouse wants a goddamn martini. Give her a martini. Yeah. And and I get your boss down here, and 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 I said, no, we have to leave. This is silly. We're not. Are we? Are you ashamed of us? 
Is it something we didn't say? Because we had to get up at uh, six o'clock in the morning in Florida, just to which is three o'clock make doing the event. drive time. No morning drive. Oh, we you did had did eighteen you, radios. Oh, that's a big one. Eighteen radios. Billy knows. Oh man, you you did those. You were those. Radio um, was a great place for somebody like me. We're rolling away, huh? Oh yeah. Here. Well, yeah. We started. Yeah, we, I think we started. We'll find something okay, we'll good. Find something. Um, you, you have to edit it. I don't care. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my guest, my guest today is the great Jim Cummings. Oh like, yes, I have to right. get my radio voice. You know what? Every time I look at podcasts, yeah, uh, there'll be people and and like everybody's got a microphone now. If, oh. if I had invested like in Yeti and all those because of the explosion <laughs> of podcasts, yeah, it's like the Beatles selling guitars. You know, it's yeah. like. <laughs> You know what it is? These people have fetishized microphones to the point they they, they yeah. light up. They're purple and green, and uh, and I'm sick of looking at them after 43 years. You know, <laughs> and and I love it how everybody's got to look the part, even though you don't need headphones. We can hear yeah. each other fine. Yeah, yeah. That and, was you, that was you that said that, right? Yeah, I thought so. You don't need no <laughs> headphones, and uh, and if someone's recording you, even with a phone. You don't need microphones either when I huh. think about it. But no, it's like you got to, it's like the lifeguard that shows up to the beach, you know, with a surfboard and a rowboat and, a you know, five pairs of trunks. And yeah, oh, man, I'm a lifeguard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want to say something. Okay. And I don't know how important it is, but yeah, it's important to me because I've got a lot of friends that I go way back with, um, you know, guys that became producers or guys that did this mm -hmm. or that. And uh, I, it doesn't seem like it, but we go back quite a ways at this point. And, mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. And isn't it funny when you're sitting with like Robbie Paulson or Maurice LaMarche or, you know, us? Tress, yeah. Tress. The gang. Uh, that we never became yesterday's men. Uh huh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you could have been put out of commission 17 years ago and yeah. never come back. Yeah, so but, far so good. But you know, it's like the, you're you're uh, one of the Still reigning going. champions. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 working my way to complimenting you. It's remarkable. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, remarkable. Well, it took us twenty years to realize we were lasting. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, how many people did you start off with? Did you know? Did you do auditions with? Did you do and cartoon one or two cartoons one or two this blah, blah, and they are not around anymore. I mean, they, I know. God, God willing, they're still alive, but they are not working. Well, I was in New York. I had I had been doing radio in Boston. You know, I, I came by mm -hmm. radio by the way of being a musician mm -hmm. and, and being out of work when disco came in. And you have to know that Billy West is one of the baddest <laughs> guitar players you ever met. Not anymore. Even if you didn't meet him. Look at these hands. Trust Look me. at the arthritis. You can see the, the welts and the bumps. Yeah, but that's a... That's a C chord, isn't it? When you just tell yes. up his, see, he just held up his hands and he's he can't fight it. No, I can't fight the it. The funk is in his trunk. So I got into radio when when disco came in. You know, it was like we we were playing everywhere and we had gigs. You know the the mm. routine. Oh yeah. And it was like one day we got sucked out of the window of a jet. Fup. You know, they they got rid of the the you stages. <laughs> yeah. They brought in the mirror balls mm. and the hanging giant refrigerator sized speakers. And I said. Oh. The audience is the star now, mm -hmm. which was bad yeah. news. If you had a combo, you were you were done. Yeah. So I got in radio at that point, and um, well, that was a good lateral move. Yeah, and it was Boston, and then I moved to New York, and I started working with uh, Howard Stern. We were sort of my boss. Malcolm. I've I've heard of him. Yes. <laughs> you know, hey, Robin, I just farted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Howard. <laughs> Yeah, there's how did the, I turn into Robin? There's the, the yeah, hell? right. I love that the, the idiot's guide to the Stern yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, what are you a C cup? What are you a D cup? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I remember seeing, uh, and it was I don't know. I guess it was Entertainment Tonight, and you were. Uh, it was it, when Howard was really starting to break. Yeah, and of course you were there. You were riding <laughs> the wave, man. You mm -hmm. were you were on top of it, and and you were there, and we had not met yet, and you were still in New York, obviously. Yes, and you're doing Marge Shot. Oh, and I, and I thought, and you're going like that, and then you busted into Larry Fine, and I said, "This guy's amazing. <laughs> I love nobody does Larry Fine. Yeah, everybody. Hey, I'm a kind of pan. 
You know, but nobody does Larry. Everybody's really stoic until you oh. do something lowbrow like Larry. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mo, there's wonderful. too much tinsel on the tree. Yeah. Oh, you know what? He was from Philly. Uh, and they all had, I don't know what it is, that mid-Atlantic, oh, yeah. uh, mm. that, that plugged up kind of, because George O'Hanlon, yeah. the voice of George Jetson, was from Philly. Okay, yeah, and yeah, he yeah, had sure. that stuffed up. Oh, come on, Jane, Janie, honey. Oh, come the on. Clint yeah. is 500 miles away. Yeah, It'll yeah. take an extra five minutes just to get there. Yeah, I sang a song as George Jetson that, Did they, you didn't, really? that they didn't use. Huh. I was so proud. Well, no, I did I a couple of commercials. It was me and, the, and it was split down between me and like Jeff Bergman. Mm. Who, if you don't know that name, you should. Is He's an incredible technician yeah. and uh, voice guy. And he, he did his time as Bugs and he's back again doing it, I believe. Mm, somewhere uh, but i started to talk about how when i was in radio i was auditioning around new york city mm. and uh my friend eddie gordetsky who was in radio with me in boston became a big producer out here but this was when we were still kind of bumming around in new york and he said i went to an audition today and there was a guy sitting next to me and i recognized his voice and I said, are you Jackson Beck? And Jack, oh, the old yeah. mighty lion says, sure, yeah. Sure I am. You know, yeah, I'm Jackson Beck. And, yeah. uh, and uh, my friend's so talking cool. to him. He says, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm sitting here with you. And, yeah. well, where you been? We've been saving a seat for you. You know, yeah. that kind of. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and then he said, my friend, Billy West, does you. He oh do boy! All the stuff that you do and everything. Oh goes, Jesus! That's wonderful. That's great. Uh, give me his phone number. Tell me where he lives, and I'll kill him. Yeah. <laughs> See, I was thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great, Pluto. Yeah. It, it, for oh, those, my that, God. you know, I mean, Jackson Beck was this <clears throat> mighty, mighty voice of the 20th century. I mean, if I could, mm -hmm. if I could stick it, hang it on one guy. Mm -hmm. It was him. He was yeah, the narrator was on there. Superman on radio. Yeah. <clears throat> Paul Freeze was in there. Paul Freeze, yeah. Yeah. Um, all these but, great voice guys. I mean, we can't help but, you know, mention them mm -hmm. because they uh, they were the grist for our mill, you know. We were oh, little yeah. kids sitting in front of the TV going, what, who? Yeah. Is there, there's a real adult behind this character? I mean, I'm not stupid. I know it, but what kind of people are these? Yeah. I thought they were magic, pure magic. Yeah. And I remember meeting Mark Elliott and he was the guy who did Disney, the Disney's wonderful world of color. Oh, him. And he, and he was so cool. And, and back, back then when we first started, when I first started out here, you would meet somebody, and it, and it would be like Don LaFontaine. Right. Don LaFontaine coming up next. You know, I can't even do him. You, you, know. you, you absolutely do him. And, 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 but I mean, you know, and he'd, he'd come up to you, and he'd say, hey, how are you doing? And I thought, the movie theater's talking to me. It right. So, it sounded like a, a, I was, my name was a movie. It's surreal. Because it's the only reference you had for these incredible voices, and they're so iconic. You just go... It's, it just pulls you right back. Yes. Out of the West, out of the Western sky, come Sky King. Yes. Whoever, I don't even know who that dude was. Um, who was the guy, um, the Lone Ranger guy? Oh, right. He, he not, I know the actor's name. Oh, played more, but I can't think of the announcer. Uh-uh. Um, I can't it's either. It's slipping, but we, yeah. uh, we got turned on, like we sat up and barked like Lassie when we heard these voices, like oh, yeah. Art Gilmore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Art Gilmore, the yeah. guy that did all the movie trailers. For Frederick William Foy. Is that what? his name? Frederick William Foy. Maybe Ooh. that is. I don't know. Three names. Sounds good. And and those guys had a similar um, approach. And Dick Tufeld. Hey mm. there. Hi there. Ho there. Oh, Dick Remember Tufeld. Him? Yes. Mickey Mouse Club. Yes. And he played what the robot yes, on Lost he... in Space. Yes. Warning, Will Robinson. And... And uh, that was Gary it. Owens yes. oh my God, was a big yeah. influence on us because uh, oh yeah, he was the radio guy on TV. There was a show called Laugh In, and the no, joke he was, was wonderful. He would have one ear, and we used to think that that was like an affectation, but it's a little more than that. Yeah, it it is. actually helps you. Yeah, 
And um, but and I liked one of his publicity photos where he had a fake hand <clears throat> on the side right. of his head, and there was no arm; it was just a hand. And, and he's going like he's talking into a mic. He was so oh. funny and so just wacky. Yeah, for a guy who sounded so straight on laced laughing and everything. And was, yeah, um, my favorite line was his: "This is your offstage announcer, reminding you that." This is your offstage announcer. Yep, he wrote and there was those. nothing, you know. <laughs> he wrote those because he? he was wacky. Oh man! Yeah, and so uh, you know, when you were talking to this guy off, off, off the mm. job site, you know, if you're having lunch yeah. or something, you sounded like you felt like you were at, in the middle of the eleven o'clock news. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, I had that with Don Lafontaine. Now, Billy, whatever happened to that uh, John Chris Falusi? You know, oh, you know, I got the Three Stooges, their star on Hollywood Boulevard. And and we oh were at Musso and Frank's once, and he pointed, you see that corner over there? It was like a history lesson wherever wow. you went. He said, I sat there with Marilyn Monroe in 1957. And, you know, he had a story for Jeez. everything because he was like the missing link between old Hollywood and, uh -huh. and nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, that's cool. Now I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> the missing link. The missing link. I don't know. I was feeling it. Can you walk with your knuckles dragging on the floor? Because that would help. Oh, God. <laughs> no, different, I just, different What do link. I spend? Let, let me ask the question. What do I spend more money on, hair dye or men's disposable diapers? That's a tough one. <laughs> I just hope I go quietly in my sleep. Oh, with sleep. me, it's definitely the diapers, see? <laughs> uh, def, definitely diapers. In fact, I, I'll be right back. I yeah, got, I got to. I, I got to. Make a deposit. I got to drop some mud. Yeah. <laughs> but now, when you first got, because you you started in a, in New York with all the with the Howard Stern show and with yep. this and that, was that through an agent? Did you do that like a regular VO guy, or how the hell did you get that gig? I got it because um, the station in Boston was the flagship of Infinity Broadcasting. It was oh, WBC, and that's where you were. And I was there, and I wanted out. It was just, it was, it was growing pains. I wanted to go to New York. Yeah. I didn't care. I was willing to throw the dice. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll do the, I'll do the sidewalk drill and do knock on doors. I was willing to do anything, and I had a lot of energy because I was a young guy. And um, our sister station, WXRK, uh, in New York, had come into this morning guy, Howard Stern, who was mm. in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. originally dc 101 oh, i didn't know that and he got fired and he was getting a reputation for being like really rank and notorious and what he was doing was laying the foundation for just about everybody's style in one way or another mm -hmm. um yeah you know i mean now there's so many howards there's sports howards and there's chick howards and there's yeah. You know what I mean it's yeah. like and he he himself is it's like being nibbled to death by ducks <laughs> you know, he was the There's undiluted. For you, folks. He was pure. He was undiluted. Wow. And then, you know, yeah, yeah. years of people just taking, oh, okay, oh, I, well, let's do our version of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happened. But um, but I got it because it was our sister station and the president of Infinity, Mel Carmazan, said, if you want to go to New York, I'll bring you to New York. Um, but, you know, not everybody wants to live in a sewer. Because well, he was paying me through he's a, probably right about a that. bean blower. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so big bucks, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pulling, pulling coin. Yeah. Get the, take the time, subway. This is big time radio. I used to walk for 50 blocks in New York because I was just like, I was like Candide, you know, I was looking everywhere. <laughs> and wow, wow, look at this. This is New York. Yeah. And then when you're not looking, somebody's like, hey, give me a wallet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow, this really is New York. Thank you. Here's my wallet. It's the least I could do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is this local color? Doggone yeah. it. You're good. Yeah, little Johnny Jones. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> but, but, so what was your first animation gig? First animation gig, I was still in Boston. It was 1980. Oh, in Boston. 86. Wow. Um, they were going to redo Beanie and Cecil. Which was a show from the 60s, yeah, Bob Clampett. Yeah, I remember. A Bob Clampett cartoon. And that guy was really interesting. There's not a lot about him out there, but his name was Irv Shoemaker, and he did Dishonest John. 
And he oh, did yeah. Cecil yeah, the. Uh, uh, yeah, he did both Cecil and Dishonest John. Oh, I and didn't there was know an announcer you probably worked with him named Jim McGeorge. He played yeah. um, Uncle Captain Huff and Puff. Oh, yeah. So, but he was doing the the Hal Perry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. That yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. She. Oh, that's the, yeah, that was such a weird show. It was, and it was hip. And it, it was really cool. And I remember there was a, a lion called Tara Long, the, the dotted, dotted lion. lion. <laughs> and, and it took, and I was 15 one day, and I went, wait a minute, I get it. Yeah, right. You know, 10 oh, years yeah, later. I, yeah. Sure. But um, there was some hip stuff going on in that show. Mm -hmm. There was a um, uh, an avant-garde wild man, and they named the the caveman who was on Beanie and Cecil the the wild man from Wildsville. And he was a yeah. beatnik who yeah. painted and there was bongo music. Yes, and, yes, yes. I remember and it the was, bongos. Um, Lord Buckley. It was really Lord Buckley. Lord Buckley. The guy? Oh man, you fuck. Because he was he oh, oh wow. Jazz. The British guy, wasn't he? No, he wasn't British. Uh he was it was like fake of... British. Oh. His name was Sir Lord Buckley, but I mean he he decided to make himself that why not? So that people would just oh, <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Did he have that? Oh man, that's the wildest. Yeah. You remember yeah, that beatnik sort of groove. And um then they use and when Lord Buckley uh was gone, they used Scatman Carruthers to replace him. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. Scatman Carruthers. Pretty he was cool. a cool dude. I know, I know. All that beautiful stuff. It's so rich and so magnificent. Yeah. And so we don't have any of that anymore, except for you, thank God. <laughs> Billy West, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, round of applause. Oh, what I know about him. Oh, man, that's fun stuff. Remembering all these names from New York. Um, John Bartholomew Tucker. Remember <laughs> oh, him? Oh, yeah. Remember him? You know, The I, Dirt Devil. And there was a place up, uh, and it still is there, I hope, uh, a voice caster. Oh, yeah. There's... Over in Burbank, and there's a wall of everybody's reel to reel. And it's like the Smithsonian of voiceovers. Yes. Of voice actors. Unbelievable. And nowhere to play them. Yeah, nowhere to, and nowhere to play them, yeah. You know what? I that, mean, Peter Cullen's up there. All, oh, sure. All, everybody. Well, you're there. I'm there. Um, I used to go to this studio on 395 Madison or 295 Madison uh, called Super Dupe. And in the the uh, the booth where you recorded, there was a just a wall of cassette tapes, you know, in their mm -hmm. cases. And I was leaning up against them, and I look at my hand, and it's filthy black with dust. And I said, they're on my ass to make a demo tape. I said, I'll just send me over. I'll, I'll do a dog and pony show for whoever wants yeah, to see me. Sure, yeah. Look at this. This, this speaks volumes. It's like, yeah, that, nobody's listening crap. to these. Yeah. yeah. And if you did one and you got into it and everything, they would always shoot you down and say, it's too long. Oh, yeah, but I wanted yeah. to show you, wait, it's too long. Yeah, but you, that's all, Bill. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not done. Yeah, that's yeah. all. <laughs> no, but I got... Over yeah. and out. I think my first one was two and a half minutes long. And then about 10 years later, <clears> it, well, I was, I was working, <clears throat> so I guess it didn't matter, but um, I was told, well, no, that's really long. Yeah, It should yeah. be like 45 seconds. Like 45 seconds. I know. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't get anything done on that time. You know, you need more room. Well, I don't know. You know what? You, you're, you're misguided in a way. You think that you're supposed to be all things to all people with that one little shot. Yeah, like how good a copywriter you are. Are you funny? Mm -hmm. uh, do you write funny stuff? And it's mm -hmm. like it's not about that. They just want to hear the quality and your delivery, and then you're off yeah. to the races. Yeah. yeah. Now, did you have a first demo? I, I finally got one when I started working for Jeff Danis. Oh yeah. Yeah, Jeff Jeff Danis was our agent. Yeah. For a while there at ICM. He's amazing. And he would say, um, "You need a demo." You mm -hmm. have to have a demo. He he sort of babysat yeah. me like a mother. And this hand. is the 80s. Yeah, well, no, 90s. 90s, okay. Mid 90s. And uh, well, he was right. He used to babysit me kind of like because I was new in town. And yeah. He would repeat, he would say, You're going over to Waves Studio today. <laughs> Waves. It's North yeah. Hollywood, barely yeah. outside of Hollywood. Right. And he said, It's on Cahuenga Boulevard. Waves Studio, <laughs> yeah. you know, because in other words, I might have been right, yeah, down, but yeah, it was yeah. deliberate like that. Yeah, and he said, "It's okay to go there during the day, 
but stay out of that part of town at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was warning me. He was right. He Now it's stay out of that t- part of town. Yeah. Just, just stay, always stay, just stay out stay of out everywhere. Of yeah. yeah. <laughs> stay out of everywhere. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Unless you really like, uh, you know, cardboard backs, condos. Oh, I, yeah. R- refrigerator I, boxes. People living in refrigerator boxes. I kind of liked it. I used Ready to live to... in Studio City. Mm-hmm. And I um, the studios were that's all right, right there. Yeah. Yeah. But the neighborhood started to change. There was like, first it starts with the mail theft. Mm-hmm. Your your box getting all your mail just grabbed. and. Well, uh, plus Tom Kenny moved in. Yeah, I know. You got that's Tom what, You got to go. Bye. Neighborhood's well, going uh, down Me and him go. were like the Hatfields and McCoys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Kenny is the funniest. Oh, man. yeah, he's, he's a great guy. He's such a refreshing breath of fresh air. Oh, yeah. When I first got a load of him, I said, look at you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, he's one of those guys. He's from Sublime. back east. Yeah, but yeah, that was uh, that was crazy. Going over to the voice caster, then Elaine Craig. We had all these places, these voice casting places that are just no more. Who was that guy? I don't that think right. To, uh, he used to eat while he was talking to even smoke all the time. And his name was Stu. Oh yeah, Stu Rosen. Stu Meshuga. Stu Rosen. I can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, he bothered me. I didn't like him. <laughs> So I'd ever auditioned for him. <laughs> it was these, probably stupid, but uh, you know, all I did these okay. characters. Yeah, I like what you do, and he'd be. <sighs> yeah, I sit there smoking. Like, leave me alone. I never smoked a cigarette in my life. I did everything else, but not that. Wow, me too. Yeah, yeah. I have every cigarette I've ever smoked right there. I've never mainlined heroin. Yeah, I'm, you know, I can draw the line somewhere, yeah, but I did mainline you. cocaine. Yeah, but I, <laughs> like a nut in the eighties, and I wound up with hepatitis. <laughs> oh yeah, I had serious problems. Oh yeah, I was a bad boy. I we, we've Hela. talked a little bit about yeah, this, yeah. but it's inspirational to people that are struggling with yeah. any kind of addiction. I mean, there's more trouble to get into nowadays. It's like there's a Baskin and Robbins. I was in a band, you know, we both share that experience. Oh, yeah. You played with lots of people. You were a drummer oh, yeah. primarily, right? Did you ever oh, get yeah. out front and just be the singer? Uh, yeah. Yeah, That's I kept what I like two bands. And uh, and I was a guitar player and a singer, and uh, it's just part and parcel in the 80s. It was mm. just part of the deal that you just got yeah. whopping drunk because cause it was like depressing. You were only going to make 16 bucks a piece <laughs> at a VFW hall. Yeah. And it was money for Chinese. See, food. once I made twenty, so I oh, didn't. Did I didn't have that kind of grief. Well, you had money for no. Chinese food and drinks. <laughs> and drinks. That's right. So, uh, so I, um, I just said, Jesus is awful, and I, me and my buddy would <laughs> caucus in between breaks, and we'd just try to suck down as much blackberry brandy and other kinds of crap. And <laughs> oh, and geez. I liked it because suddenly I, I didn't have the kind of problems that always plagued me, which was depression. I was born with chronic low-level depression, and there's no mm. way you can know that when you're a kid. Yeah, uh-huh. I just thought everything was upside down. You just thought you were Irish. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> I, I know this one. I'm Irish, all right. <laughs> I have dual citizenship to Ireland. Welcome to the devil. Yeah, or maybe you're meet telling me about your, oh, your uncle. Meet the devil. Oh, that's a chapter. And in it this. wasn't walk. And it wasn't water. No, he said <laughs> you better meet him now because you're going to meet him later on. And I said, uh, meet the devil. Okay. And he was right, though. The old yeah. bastard was right. Yeah, yeah. And um, the drug of Irish poets. <laughs> Your birthright. Right. <laughs> the muse. That's right. Madam Bottle. Oh, my God. Yeah, so true. And so I had a real tussle with that stuff. And then mm-hmm. somebody said, hey, man, do you want to do some cocaine? And I said, I don't know about that stuff. You know, I mean, I was... But I, but I was a blooming garbage head. Eventually, I'd just take anything anybody put in front of me. Yeah, Here, take this. You, you look like a party guy. Yeah. Jeez. And so I would uh, do coke and, and just get drunk, and I'd be so messed up. And I wound up crashing a car at doing like 90 miles an hour, and I fell asleep on the mass pike. And what woke me up was the sound of the car going through the guardrail. Oh. And it flipped upside down on the other side of the mass pike. That'll get your attention. The wheels going, you know. and Holy and crap. It was right in front of the Weston State Police Barracks. It was like I delivered myself to them. You know, it was like a, Perfect. S- a scream for help. Help me. Oh, man. Yeah. Someone said that's a great way to scrape bird shit off your roof. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that too. 
But um, but I, I my point being is that there's people that struggle, and I don't have to go into a whole sordid tale. But, yeah, yeah. But uh, but I chased it down it there, stupidly, yeah. and I was lucky to to have lived through it. Me and five other chuckleheads once went to Peru, to Lima. We were gonna have a, we had this brilliant idea. Hey, why don't we go where they make the shit? Oh, oh, that kind of Peru. I, I was thinking, okay, not Machu Picchu. Well, or close. Whatever, well, maybe close. I think that is that the right country. That's Machu the right Picchu? country. Okay. Um, and so we we went down there, and and I was so smashed on the way down that I, some guy reclined on me, and I started kicking and booting oh, and making a, a scene. Now they'll just tie you up in duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> but I promised I'd be a good boy, and I I would switch it on and off. I would be the black devil one minute, and then I'd be like cherubic, <laughs> angelic. <laughs> And so they they Who, let me, me?